Welcome to BizHack's Digital Marketing Masterclass Series in collaboration with the mayor of Miami-Dade County. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack and the host of this Digital Marketing Masterclass Series, season three. We have an amazing lineup for you guys for season three. Today, we're gonna to talk about thought leadership on LinkedIn. Uh, next session in two weeks, we're going to talk about how to create an exciting Google business profile. Google business profile is the new name that Google has given to Google My Business, and it has become essential for any retail or location-based business uh, in terms of marketing. We'll run you through all the changes and opportunities there. And then finally, when it comes down to it as a small business, you want to inspire brand love. That is the essence of success online, and we'll have a great session on that. Um, today, as I mentioned, uh, Cheryl Cattell is going to be talking about how to use thought leadership on LinkedIn to better compete and inspire customers. Uh, very excited for the interactive workshop that we're going to be doing today. Uh, and we talked about the upcoming webinars as well. At the end, of season three, we always cap it on March 2nd with our digital marketers graduation celebration. Those of you who attend all these free sessions are invited. Uh, we're gonna feature case studies from digital marketing, small businesses, a thank you gifts raffle and a musical surprise. So season three has a ton in store for it and we're excited to get started. I wanted to welcome and invite uh, our uh, partner uh, in crime, our sponsor, the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County uh, and their uh, Strive 305 initiative, Danilo Vargas, uh, representing the Office of the Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. Welcome, uh, and I'd love you to say a few words about your Strive 305 efforts in 2022. Oh, thank you so much, Dan, and it is really great to be with you all. Uh, my name is Danilo Vargas. I am in the Mayor's Office, Mayor Daniela Levine Cava and I'm in the Office of Equity and Inclusion, and it's a great pleasure. I am a small business innovation manager in that office. So my job as per the mayor is to help you be successful. And that's what this masterclass is all about. It's part of the Mayor's Strive 305 initiative, which is a program that is really aimed at helping our small business owners, which are the backbone of our economy to thrive even in a pandemic and, and in everything that's to come, right? There's a lot of opportunities and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. It's an honor for me and it's an honor for the mayor's office to work with a distinguished organization like BizHack who are really one of the top marketing experts that you can find anywhere. And one thing I, I can tell you from my own experience because I come from the marketing field is that the trick, the key to your success is leveraging digital marketing so that you're able to attract more customers and grow your business and generate revenue and profit. And that's what we're really talking about today. So I hope you'll enjoy. I hope you'll take lots of, of notes and enjoy this class. And I'm gonna put a link into the chat box where you can sign up to receive Strive 305 updates. So I encourage you to learn about the other things we're doing as part of the Mayor Strive 305 initiative to help you succeed. Thank you guys again. And I'll be sticking around for the whole class, Dan. And I have my notes and pen ready to go. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for your kind of incredible support, uh, Danilo. And, and we're so excited for what's in store. We actually have a number of seasons and uh, a, a number of great content. We're already starting planning for season four, which is coming up in March. I also wanted to acknowledge uh, our media sponsor, South Florida PBS and the Health Channel, uh, as well as our extraordinary promotional partners, the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, ICABA, Miami Foundation, AMA South Florida, South Florida Inter Interactive Marketing Association, Miami Bayside Foundation, Miami-Dade Beacon Council, Creative Station Business, our newest partner, the Community Fund of North Miami-Dade, Access Helps Miami, Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce, Aventura Marketing Council, Coconut Grove Chamber of Commerce, and Cutler Bay Business Association. If you were part of the small business support community and you were interested in becoming a promotional partner for us, 
uh, featured during these webinars and uh, also in the press releases we put out about them, please reach out to us at BizHack, uh, at info at bizhack.com, and we'd love to include you. So um, many of you already know me. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and, and CEO of BizHack. Uh, BizHack is a company dedicated to helping small businesses grow using digital marketing. And we do that through a variety of ways, through training, through coaching, and through consulting services. And so uh, obviously this series is for us a way to give back. Uh, you know, I spent most of my career in public service as a journalist uh, and now as a small business owner, uh, as an organization that serves underserved communities. And so it's really uh, incredibly, uh, uh, it's an incredible honor for us to be able to do this. Um, a lot of you guys are gonna ask, uh, do we get a copy of the presentation or, or what, what are the follow-ups? Um, I want you to know that we will be sending you after today's presentation, a handout with key takeaways, a link to this recording, and we have automatically registered those of you who are new to the masterclass series for our upcoming masterclass sessions. Um, we also uh, are, are gonna talk after today's session about a really special offer that we're gonna be giving to all of you for come, as a thank you for coming today for our upcoming LinkedIn course that Cheryl uh, is the lead instructor of. So, Please stick around. Uh, we're going to offer talk about that at the end of today's presentation. I'm going to give a little uh, info session about that. Uh, and so with that, uh, how to use thought leadership on LinkedIn to better compete and inspire customers with Cheryl Cattell. Cheryl is an extraordinary talent, uh, a marketer of more than two decades. Uh, she's won uh, a number of awards for her work. Um, she has worked at the highest levels of marketing for large companies and assisted countless other companies. She's also the founder of two interactive marketing associations, one in Dallas and one here in South Florida. And so she has kind of a proven track record of giving back and working with marketers uh, to share her knowledge. And uh, she is, uh, it has taught at a lot of places, including the University of San Francisco, uh, UVA, Central Michigan, and most recently in FAU. And of course, uh, she's a course creator with us at BizHack Academy. Cheryl uh, is an extraordinary talent and uh, a dear friend. She also uh, has a, a coaching business where she really helps people find their life's purpose. Uh, and you have been an incredible coach and mentor to me. And so uh, without further ado, the amazing Cheryl Cattell. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> you're too kind. Thank you, Dan. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I put a couple of things into the chat. Actually, maybe what I'll do is, um, let's see, can I do that? Okay. Let me stop for a second. I'm going to share my uh, browser so that way I can go between uh, the presentation and, all right. So um, there's a couple of things I wanted to share with you. Um, there's a survey that's in the, in the uh, um, chat as well as a checklist. And the checklist is a PDF. Highly recommend you go ahead and print it out and uh, have it on hand as you leave the session and decide you really want to get serious about LinkedIn. I think uh, this is, yeah, thank you so much, Lilia. So there's um, two things. There's a checklist survey and there's also a checklist um, PDF. So we're going to go through the PDF and uh, there you go. That's, that's it. Um, what we're going to talk about today is the new LinkedIn and why it has completely transformed. Uh, LinkedIn is now a platform where uh, business professionals can establish themselves as thought leaders, as go-to people. Uh, they can establish credibility and um, social uh, credibility as well as technical credibility. So um, what we're gonna go through today is kind of a proven process. Uh, it's, it's what, we teach in the class and we have case studies. I'll actually share one with you uh, where somebody has gone through these steps and um, I'll share with you some of the results of those. So 
Um, let's let's dive in. We're going to start uh, at the foundation. We're going to go up and once you've got your shop open for business, you're ready to take customers. Um, we want to help you get to know which customers, who is it you're talking to. It's very important to know who your target customer is so you can speak their language. And that's the third level where you start getting dis discovered. Um, that's keywords and hashtags. That's the language of your target or ideal customer. The next one up is once you've got your house in order, you know who you're talking to, you know what language, we're going to start listening and doing some competitive research. And then uh, when you really start to come up to the pinnacle of the thought leadership, you take a stand and you start becoming part of the discussion, part of the conversation. And at the top, you are actually getting noisy. And part of that getting noisy is having the connections uh, and the connections to the connections of people on LinkedIn so your um, message is amplified. And that's why I was encouraging you today, go ahead and start connecting. Even though maybe I'm not your target customer, I bet you a lot of my connections may very well be. So, all right, well, let's dive in. Oh, I did want to, I did say to you, we have, um, we've had a couple of cohorts now. We're starting our third one. And I wanted to just share some uh, statistics in terms of people's ability to improve their um, position and thought leadership on LinkedIn. Uh, the first one is the social selling index. You all are going to get an opportunity to calculate what your social selling index is. And we saw on average our participants went up by 51%. So most of them start at 40 and then they go up to 60 plus. Post per week. This is another thing. This is about accountability. And that's a great thing about the class is we give you ideas. We give you kernels of ideas. We tell you which posts have the best response rates. And it's also an accountability to those in the class. Yeah, yeah, I said I would post. I said I would post. So posts per week on average go up about 340%. So um, post views also. This is a tr little known trick is that you can use your friends and family to help boost your post views by having them comment or share your post. We see on average about 173%. So if you're spending time building posts and posting content, writing content, and only a few hundred get to see it, uh, we have some case studies where people have gone from a few hundred to a few thousand. And so it really makes the return on that investment of the creating that content a lot more valuable. Um, the other thing that we, we focus on is how many people actually uh, see your profile in a 90-day period. That's where, how um, LinkedIn um, measures it. And then also this one, the search result appearances. And this is all part of the keywords and getting, making sure that the things your people, your target customers are typing in to search for, we want to make sure and you want to make sure you're showing up in the search results and then they go and click on you. So that's kind of a, a, an overview of some of the metrics. Um, we also talk about setting up weekly rituals. I'm going to share this with you. We encourage our, our, t our classes to make it a habit, 10 connections a week, find 10 people. You've got 10 people, you've got actually 10 times that amount here right on this webinar. Uh, over 100 of us here, we all connect and we all have connections to our connections connections. So that's the, the name of the game. There's sort of a threshold about 500 is where you want to be at the minimum. And then, of course, from there, it's all up, right? Um, you could be like Dan. I think, Dan, what have you got? 10,000 connections. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, our, our role model. Um, the, also th the other thing we do is uh, we try to hold you accountable for posting once a week. And we all get together on Wednesdays and um, help each other boost our post. The other thing you want to start doing is requesting and writing five recommendations. And then make sure you're recording and paying attention to your metrics, the ones that I just shared, for example. All right. 
Um, I love Suzanne and her case study. She's uh, she actually left public broadcasting and broadcasting media in general, and has put her tush on a cush, as, as she says it, and become the mindful entrepreneur. And so it really became important for her to establish herself as a thought leader in mindfulness and leadership. So as a result of taking the class, she had 8,000 followers. She landed a major client in just a few weeks, and she was approved to do the live streaming on LinkedIn, which it's a, a application and approval process. And we give some help with that as well. She also had the highest ever um, infographic views of uh, uh, over 9,000. So we know this stuff works. <laughs> Um, uh, I'd like to share Hutch, uh, a little bit about Hutch. He is uh, the co-founder of the Black Professionals Month. He's also the chief service officer of ICABA, which is a community, a membership community for black professionals worldwide. And, um, you know, he shared some of his ahas and he thinks that had he known about this sooner, uh, that he could have been a lot more effective in supporting black initiatives. So um, he was very jazzed as a result of the class and you know, plans on making a lot of uh, inroads into his leadership position. So um, lastly, we're gonna carry Rosemary Ravenel with us through the class. I'm gonna share with you at each of the levels an example of what she did. Um, but I thought I'd introduce you to her. She's a professional speaking coach. Uh, works very uh, closely with bilingual executives in the C-suite. Uh, she has, uh, has created and trademarked something called the Zoom score, right? Professional speaking is online now. And so she found a way to measure and improve effectiveness of doing a virtual presentation. So she also, um, it, it, this has created for her a lead generation and li list builder. And during the period of our class, she had almost 500 people who took the Zoom score and 80% of those subscribed to her newsletter. So um, kudos to Rosemary and I'll take you a little bit deeper into her experience. I did wanna share with you her um, personal profile where she talks about her business. Uh, again, it's not she's not looking for a job other than to become your personal your personal coach in public speaking. And then this is her company page as well. And um, Rosemary, and in the class, we recommend spending about ninety percent of your time on your personal profile because people on LinkedIn are there because they want to know who they're doing business with. If they wanted a, a company, they'd go to Google search and go to your company page. LinkedIn is all about connecting on a personal level. So you're gonna see that um, throughout. All right, so this is the printout or you can just pull it up as a PDF. Uh, this will go through each one of the levels in the pyramid. And it's kind of a checklist and it's something, it's a gift for you to take with you. And um, you can go through and just put a little check mark next to the boxes as you either tackle each one and, oh, and, um, and fill it out and become uh, that thought leader that you're looking for. So it's kind of a nifty tool. And then the other thing we recommend is to open this uh, survey and, and follow along with us. So I'm gonna talk about each one of the levels of the pyramid, and I'd like you to give yourself a score from zero to 10. So that's how this is gonna work. We'd love for you then to share with us at the end um, in the chat what your score is. So, all right, the first one, Lilia, if you could put the um, SSI link into the chat, you'll need to be logged into LinkedIn. This is a way for you to get a a benchmark, a baseline of what your social selling index is. This is a service that's provided by LinkedIn and it's a way for them, thank you so much, Lilia. If you click on that, you may need to link to log in. If you're not logged in, then please do so. And the number we're looking for is this one right here in the middle, 76. It's called your current social selling index. And if you could, please put your current score in the chat and 
don't be shy. We all had to start in the 20s. Um, I've got students in my digital marketing class. Oh, good, very good, and very good. I've got students in my digital marketing class that are starting at two. <laughs> so um, yes, is there a difference between using LinkedIn to sell yourself and your, your company? Um, my, my, what I'm telling you is on LinkedIn, you sell yourself and then use that personal connection to then sell your company. So you want to sell your thought leadership. You want to become seen as the go-to person. I'm come when anybody thinks about LinkedIn training, I want to be the person who comes to mind for them. And so that will then lead them to come to my company and sign up for a session and pay for it. So that's what that's how I teach LinkedIn. It's also pretty much uh, everybody that I talk to sees LinkedIn as make the personal connection. Thanks, Jesse, 29. Uh, Moto, uh, 45. Okay, very good. Like I said, my students at FAU have like two and four and six. So you guys are rocking it, <laughs> very good. All right, what I wanna tell you about the other numbers on this is your industry, this is how you rate compared to everyone else that is indicated your same industry. So for me, this is advertising and marketing. That's my industry. I'm in the top 1%, which is surprising to me because 76 out of 100 doesn't sound like it's in the top 1%. Now, when I compare my network, SSI, what this is, it's comparing everyone I'm connected to, all of my connections, my 5,000 connections, I am in the top 3%. So the people I'm connected to are a little bit more savvy than my industry overall. So, um, and then this, these little bars, I'm gonna suggest you come back to them um, very good, Wendy, 74, awesome. You should teach this class. Um, Dan, get with Wendy. All right, um, you can uh, hover over these uh, little question marks and it'll give you ideas of how you can boost this. And you'd say, who cares? What's this number anyway? What does it matter? Well, um, oh, first scale um, from zero to 10, based on your score, go ahead and fill in the survey. So you should be putting in, for me, I would put, I think, uh, 10, because I'm over 75. And I'm gonna share with you why this matters. It does matter, okay? So while you're doing that, fill in your survey. This is some research that just got released in the fall of 2021. And this was done, it's called the Annual LinkedIn Algorithm Report. And they spend hundreds of hours testing different things on LinkedIn to try to guess what the algorithm is. So thanks, Shwanda, um, for your 46. All right, so the higher your SSI score, the higher number of post views you will receive for all of your efforts. So when you post something in your newsfeed, if you have 45 or less, you'll actually get 10% less views or less time in the feed compared to somebody 45 to 59. And it goes up, of course, we'd all love to get to 90 um, where we could get 30% more views, but the idea here is you do want to spend time, you do want to understand your SSI and take a look at it, maybe once a month. That's my suggestion. All right, so we've got our benchmark. I'm going to share with you these ideas and I want you to go put them all into a, uh, effect and then 30 days from now, go back and see how you're doing. All right, so I want to remind you, LinkedIn is a long game. It's not something you do overnight. When you do advertising, you put a boatload of money in it and you start seeing instant results, you stop spending money and boom, it's over. The great thing about LinkedIn and building your presence and building your thought leadership, yes, it takes time, but the great thing is once it's there, it will serve you and continue to serve you. So it's an investment, a labor of love, it's time and energy. 
and it's about connecting. And that's what we used to do. Remember when we used to do the belly to belly connections? We can't do that anymore. So LinkedIn is a great alternative, right? So what I want you to do is really think about this. Keep calm and play the long game. And that's what LinkedIn is. Now, this map is, is really meant to confuse you, um, but it's, it's meant to represent, well, who do I hire? I would just want to hire and I want somebody else to do it. How do I measure success? I don't even know where to start. And so you, what you need is a proven process. And that's what the, the thought leadership pyramid is. So we talked a little bit about this. I'm going to go right into the foundation. This is the very most important things. You've got to make sure your profile is optimized. You want to make sure you're an all star as it relates to LinkedIn. Um, in our class, we have what we call the sweet 16. And those are the 16 things that we have found have the most impact on getting appearances and search results and getting your post viewed more in the in newsfeed. So you want to make sure you've added all of the sections. There's a lot of sections in LinkedIn profiles that do not come as uh, right out of the box. You have to go in and actually add sections or add open to services provided, for example. Also, we recommend that you remove competitors from your page, from your profile page. You're saying, what? How did competitors get on my page? It's a default setting. It's called people also viewed. So when somebody comes to my profile and is reading all about how wonderful I am, it used to be right next to my profile were a list of all my competitors, everyone else who's doing LinkedIn training. Oh my God, no, I don't want that. So we teach you how to get rid of those competitors. And also we uh, recommend that you do things to help improve your dwell time. Dwell time? What the heck are you talking about, Cheryl? Dwell time is once they get to your profile, how long do they stick around? How far down do they read? And there's a little known tool, which is called um, the, your profile cover story video. And once you put that on, guess what? Your profile picture changes from a static image to a animated picture of you um, actually kind of flagging them down. I call it the Hogwarts effect, right? If you recall in the Harry Potter uh, movies, they'd go by the pictures and they'd, you know, they'd be talking and, and, and cavorting. And that's what you can do. That will increase your dwell time on your profile. And that <laughs> 10 points for Gryffindor. OK, great. I love it. Oh, you guys are great. All right. So you also want to make sure your story of me is compelling. And that means you've got to make sure it's important. It's in your do employer. I'm sorry, I get so um, distracted. Do employers really look at LinkedIn for employ? Absolutely. I never. I don't think I know a single person in HR that won't visit your um, LinkedIn profile. And um, also in sales. If you're in sales, the people that you're talking to are. They absolutely want to know who is Cheryl Cattell and has she done anything like this that I'm going to pay her my good money for? And so that's why it's important, not just employers, but prospects or potential customers. So you want to make sure your story of me is compelling, unique, and gives them a reason to connect with you versus all the other people also viewed, which is going to be gone after you do this. Ah, landlords are looking for tenants. Good job, Christine. OK, I hadn't thought of that one. So you also want to make sure your core purpose is clearly stated. You're very, very succinct about what it is that you want to do with your life, with your business, and with them. The idea is to connect. And you want to be connecting with people who share your vision of what it's like to do business with each other, right? So. All right, so I just used um, BizHax as a, an example, but BizHax Why, Start With Why, Simon Sinek, highly recommended read if you haven't read it. 
Um, he says every business needs to start with why. And so basically uh, Dan's goal is to provide businesses a way to grow that so they can thrive and to do it without losing any hair or um, losing their mind, trying to sort out that big grid that I showed you earlier. So how, how do they do it? They do it with storytelling. We do it with strategy and also software recommendations. So those are the hows. And then um, in terms of, um, oops, sorry, uh, what? Uh, content coaching and community. So building that community so that um, folks can help each other and also connect with each other. So. This is our um, 16 point, uh, I call it the sweet 16. And this is the checklist that we uh, recommend that you have in place and ready for and opened for business. So um, great, Ebony, nice to see you. All right, so what I'd like you to do right now is be honest. The only person who's gonna see this is you, so you're not gonna fool anybody. Um, where are you on a scale of zero to 10 in terms of the foundation? Have you maximized your profile? You got those new features or the non-default features activated? You have your account settings updated, no competitors. You know why and you've shared why your company or business exists and you're really clear about your story of me. So go ahead and put that in the, in the in your um, survey, and we're going to add that up at the end. And uh, let's let's move on while you're totaling that up. The next one, as I mentioned, you've got to make sure that you really are clear about who your zero. You had Anne. Oh well, you after today, you've got our um, we've, you've got our document. I'm going to give you some other tools. By the time you're done with today, you're going to have. Um, all the tools you need to start getting your foundation in order. You'll just have to do it on your own, um, but we'll give you those tools. So now we're at knowing your target. Who is your ideal customer? They're called personas. They're called avatars by those marketing people that um, obviously get paid to come up with fancy words to say, who is my target customer? That's basically just a fancy way of saying that. So there are some audience discovery tools. Um, uh, let's see, I'm trying, oh, SEM Rush has a wonderful um, persona wizard that I highly recommend. And that's on the document that, uh, that Lilia is gonna share, I think, right? We have a list of links. Okay, good. Whew. All right, but I did put it in the uh, chat. This is a wonderful tool that will help you sort of think through what age are they? What sex are they? What nationality? Where do they live? Geographic? Tell me, you know, you want to get as much as you can about that customer so you can get inside their head. You also will want to segment your customers. So, you know, kind of the low hanging fruit is where we always recommend. Don't try to do eat the whole enchilada but we want you to segment and go after those that you have the best chances of converting so that then you have some money to go out and get more customers. So that's what we usually recommend at this stage. All right, let's go back to Rosemary. And I wanted to share with you, she did a great job on her, um, her target market. This is her per one of her two personas. We always recommend do pairs. Um, Raul is a C-suite executive at a multinational corporation in, in Latin America. He's, uh, he's learned English, uh, but he still has an accent, but he, is, he's, he wants to go all the way to the top, board of director, uh, chairman of the board of director, CEO. But every single one of his presentations is high stakes in his mind. And he's a little cautious and maybe a little embarrassed about being vulnerable. And so he works with Rosemary as a confidant. And then you can see over here on the right, um, his, his uh, sex, his age, married, kids, passions, where does he live, etc. So this is when I said one of two personas, the other persona for Rosemary is his executive assistant. So when he's getting ready for one of his presentations and he's, you know, a little cranky with her and nervous, she might say to him, you know, Raul, 
I know about this woman, Rosemary Ravenall, and she works with people just like you. And so that's the other side of the persona pair. And, um, but I didn't show that here because I think Raul, I get, think you get it here in what we're trying to show. All right, so how well have you done in terms of defining your target customer? The most profitable, easiest to serve, and everybody in your team, maybe it's just a team of one, it understands that. You've maybe done your persona pairs. If you haven't, you've got a link, go do it. <laughs> um, but you have to score yourself zero on that for as, until you do. And make sure that you have a methodology. It can be your Google contact database, but just make sure you've got a system for keeping track of all your customers and prospects and partners. So you can start building your list and for your for your email communication that you can use for lead nurturing. Okay, all right, everybody score, and you can share if you are willing, um, but definitely put it in your survey so that we can add it up at the end. Okay, Shwanda, I think you did better on that one. Oh, Christine, awesome. You got her going on, all right. So we're gonna go on to level three, get discovered. So. This is where I highly recommend you use some research tools. Remember I talked about um, uh, BizHack and one of the things we share is software. Um, there are a number of, and you just can Google this, uh, but volume and difficulty is the things you wanna look at. You wanna make sure that you understand the keywords, how many people are searching for that keyword, how difficult is it going to be for you to compete on that keyword. Now, these tools are generally for Google. Um, however, they are appropriate, right, for any um, any outlet or any platform. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is a great thing about LinkedIn is it's totally indexed and it appears on Google. So if you've done an awesome job of identifying the keywords, phrases, and hashtags, you can also find your results showing up from LinkedIn on Google. So the other thing I wanna recommend you do is do some competitive research. You wanna find out what are your competitors, what are the words they're, they're using in their posts and hashtags are a great, great way to look at that on LinkedIn. Yes, hashtags are not just for Instagram. Hashtags are very much in use on LinkedIn. We also recommend that you have three types of hashtags for every single topic that you cover. So for example, if you're in compliance, then maybe you do compliance for HIPAA, for, for healthcare, or maybe, yeah, Ebony, I love the hashtags too. Maybe you're doing uh, compliance for PCI, for using credit cards. So you would want for each one of your topics to come up with general, so HIPAA, specific, HIPAA compliance, and um, actually I think it's H-I-P-A-A, -A. there you go, that's it. And PCI, if, if you're in compliance, that's, you should, you probably recognize these. But so what you wanna do specific would be HIPAA compliance, and then owned, maybe BizHack, as an owned. So your company name would be an owned hashtag. But you definitely, the where you're gonna get most of the track, traction is here on the general and specific. We recommend that you have these for every single one of your topic areas. The next thing is you wanna make sure you're using the at sign, not just for people, but also for companies. It's a great way to get someone's attention. If you put a post up there and at sign me, it's gonna show up in my feed. Same thing for a company that you may be targeting. Put the at and the company, BizHack, and that'll show up in Dan's feed. And he'll go, huh, what's going on here? What are they talking about? So that's a great way, a strategic use of apps and um, use them for people and for companies. And then we also talk, you know, give you some ideas when and where to use these. Um, definitely three hashtags, three at signs for every single post. Um, that's what we recommend. So there we go. 
I wanted to share with you Rosemary. She's back. Um, so for her, this is uh, an example. She uses general public speaking, her specific presentation skills, uh, or excuse me, uh, presentation skills is another general and bilingual is another general. So to get it specific, bringing it closer to home, she's a public speaking coach. She helps people get media ready. She does virtual meetings and video conferencing. So those are a, lo a little bit more specific um, underneath the general and then owned. She owns, of course, the name of her business. She has something called an assets, it's an acronym, and then the Zoom score, which, which we already talked about. So she uses these in LinkedIn. She also embeds them in her website. So, all right, so get discovered with hashtags. Make sure you pick the right ones. You want to make sure that for your industry and your target market or subject, you've got to know it's like a Goldilocks. You want to make sure that there's enough that it makes it worth your while. Like, for example, let's find one. Yeah, spiritual coach. There's only 212 people on LinkedIn that care about spiritual coaching. So probably not a good one for me. However, on the other side of that is happiness. 2.2 million people, hashtag happiness. And yet that's probably not a good, it's not targeted enough to um, attract people. At, the, at, at that time I was doing a, a study group for a happiness class, the science of well-being at Yale University. And so that's not a really good hashtag. Too many people, not really focused enough. So um, I'm just trying to give you an idea that Goldilocks, you want to be right there in the middle, the sweet spot. So things, things like, you know, mentoring, mindful, well, mindfulness is a little bit too many, 1.7 million, but the 20, 10 to 20, 30,000, it's better to use more popular versus the ones which no one uses. You want to be in the sweet spot, not too many, not too few. So, um, it, and you want to make sure it's on target with what you're offering, right? Don't just pick a hashtag because it's got 10,000 people. Make sure it meshes with what you're talking about and what you're uh, an expert in. All right. So I recommend you follow. You can check the LinkedIn um, volume. There is a link here and I think Lilia might put it into uh, chat, but you can go ahead and follow them and then go and look at them. Uh, on your uh, the left side of your page there you can scroll down and it'll say hashtags and I can pull this up and see how what's trending for hashtags that I'm interested in. Now if you want to look up a, a hashtag you're not following just put in the search uh, under LinkedIn hashtag mentoring click that and then keep clicking uh, that that hashtag on the page until you get to a page that's called hashtag mentoring. And there's where you can follow it and see the number of followers. They don't make it real easy. Where is the hashtag option? All you do is add hashtag to your posts. Um, that's usually the most important place. And uh, you'll see if you go to my, uh, my, you, my profile, you'll see at the very top of my profile, the hashtags that I'm trending for. So um, that's where you find the hashtag options. Okay. Oh, and also no spaces between words on hashtags. However, spaces between words on at signs. All right. Okay. Time of reckoning. How are you doing on your, uh, your score for getting discovered? How well do you do in terms of get your keyword phrases identified? You've made sure that they, the right volume and difficulty. You've got general, specific, and owned. They map to the content, to the uh, concepts that you talk about, and you consistently use three hashtags and three at signs in every one of your posts. Go ahead, give yourself a score, zero to 10. If you're brave, which many of you are, thank you, thank you. I have nowhere to go but up. I love it, Anne. Yes, absolutely. Love it. Okay. Um, so go ahead and score yourself. We're going to go threes across the board. Kirk, lots of room for improvement. You're going to be our uh, most improved rookie. Okay. All right, Melissa. Good job. We'll keep at it. Um, I hope all of your scores go up as a result of this session. I want to see that. 
All right, enter the fray. Um, this is where you start doing your social listening and competitive research. So where, this is where you want to make sure you're really getting crystal clear. You don't want to sound like every other person who's doing LinkedIn training. So my uniqueness is I use LinkedIn training to help people find their purpose. And I use LinkedIn to help people get zeroed in on their purpose. And then in a life coaching situation, I help them get there. So I'm very different than most, most um, LinkedIn uh, thought leaders who are just here, you know, come here and we're going to bang through your, your, your profile and we're going to bang through your uh, hashtags. I'm really looking for something that speaks to you and that it really resonates and will help you get to where you want to be in your life. So you want to make sure you're really focused. I'm list listening to my customers. I'm doing the competitive research. I know where I stand. And then the things I post should reflect that, right? If you read my post, you should say, oh, here's Cheryl with one of her little daily inspirations. You know, you'd think she wants me to be happy in my life or wants me to get back on purpose. You're right. <laughs> so that's the idea is you want to make sure that you're, you're really living that. Also, you want to reply and respond. Please do not post and ghost. Um, first of all, you're going to get you're going to get um, dinged by LinkedIn because if you do a bunch of posting and people start commenting and then crickets, LinkedIn will take that into effect. They want you to reply to most comments within two hours. So make sure you're engaged, engage with them, listen, reply, respond, right? And make sure, again, you're looking at what your competitors are doing. Look at the people who are, are engaging with your competitors and you can engage with them. So that's just a little trick of entering the fray. And that's what we're doing at this point in time. I wanted to share at this point um, a little bit about uh, Rosemary. And this is actually her one of her irresistible offers, which we're going to talk about next. Um, what is your Zoom score? It's a free assessment. You can go in and just do a 10 point checklist, kind of similar to what we're doing here. Um, and yes, two hours, I know, Ebony, but that's yes, Kirk. Uh, talk to LinkedIn. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you what the what the uh, algorithm is telling us. All right. So she came up with this 10 point checklist and it does provide you some really good things like, oh, I didn't think about, you know, my bra hanging on the chair behind me or you know things like that so um it's a really good test and then at the end you can sign up for more like this more good ideas more good tips and so um this is a really good example uh of of how you take that okay all right and then um entering the fray let's take uh, a level four let's make sure you um uh, get your score here how clear is your thought leadership and um, in this case, I, I put the irresistible offer. Uh, that's the Rosemary's irresistible offer. And then um, industry influencers, have they been identified? Are you engaging with them? Um, and do you know who your competitors are? And you have compared yourself to them to try to differentiate yourself. OK. All right, so go ahead, enter your score. And um, then we're going to keep moving. Uh, you can share in the chat. Tell us how you're doing on your enter the fray. Level five, let's take a stand. This is where your messaging, oh, zero. I'm sorry, Ann. You, you're going to do better. Shwanda, four, good. ATV. Um, so this stands for authentic, transparent, and vulnerable. So this is not about coming up with some slick sales copy. This is not about trying to be, you know, uh, you know, all that in a bag of chips. This is about being who you are, being very transparent, and also maybe even a little vulnerable. Because again, remember, we're connecting at a personal level. So you want to make sure also at this point, your marketing proposition or your communication is speaking about customer pain points. That's the magnet. Are you, do you feel stuck in your life? Do you, are you ready to go to the next level? Would you love to go to work and love what you do every day? Get in con contact with me. Go to my about section. 
that's where I'm talking to your customer pain points. And that's what's going to pull them into my about section and learn more about me. So you also want to make sure you're now raising it up. Now you're talking about industry trends, current events, anything that's developing. Maybe you're even creating a trend, okay? This is where you take a stand. So back to Rosemary. Here's some examples of how she got involved and jumped in to what was dis happening, what was the discussion and how she brought it into her uh, her business. So for example, she went and analyzed the color choices of Kamala Harris and Joseph Biden, all of the people that were up on the, the, the kiosk um, during the, the, uh, the symbolism of the colors they chose and why that's important when you're going to give a speech. So she pulled that example, everybody had just seen it, and she used that as an example for you to learn from, to think about what color do you use uh, when you go to speak at your next event. Also, she uh, analyzed an Oprah blog, uh, which was all about body language as well as color choices. So. Here you've got a great example of how you can make this. Um, uh, uh, Lilia, could you let Lorraine know how to get her, uh, oh, Zoom score. I don't know if we have that link. Oh, just go to Rosemary Ravenel in LinkedIn and she's got it on all, all over her pages. All right, level five, where are you? Take a stand, give yourself your score, zero to 10. How authentic, transparent, and vulnerable are you? Are you really clear about what makes you different from everyone else? And are you speaking to pain points? What pain points your customers have? And you're doing it in many different formats. You're using text and images, polls, videos, slides, infographics. That's another thing that we work with you in our class on is using and leveraging all of the different ways to connect because some people are visual, some people are kinesthetic, some people are audible uh, learners. So we, we do wanna make sure we're speaking in all different levels. So, all right, here's your next chance. Give us a score, zero to 10, how are you doing? And while you're calculating, I'm going to go on to get noisy. We're here up at the top. Oh, Anne, you, you, you'll be better next time. Come back. Um, we're going to operate at scale. That's what this is all about. Noisy means people are going to hear you, more and more people. That's why we make sure that all along the five weeks, you've been increasing your connections. Now it's amplifying what you're saying. Good job, Wendy, you should be teaching this. All right, so your irresistible offer, you've tried it, you've tested it, it's performing, you've optimized it, now you're gonna put it everywhere. You've got a content plan that's been planned out on a, on a calendar or in a uh, one of the social media platforms, but you know what you're gonna talk about and when it's thought, it's not like in the morning you get up and you look at the blank page and you go, oh no, what am I gonna talk about? No, you've got a plan. You know what you're gonna talk about and you've got, it, you've got a plan and you work the plan. And again, the idea here is you are elevating yourself and that when somebody thinks about what it is you do, you're the first name that comes to mind. All right, so I wanted to share a couple of other irresistible offers that, um, that Rosemary offers. She has PDF downloads, and she's found in the past that these are great. So mastering public speaking on Zoom, and then you know, um, both physical and uh, online checklist for powerful presentations. So these are some uh, great ideas and, you know, of course you have to do the things, the information that, that speaks to your customer's pain points, but I think she's done an awesome job. So, all right. So I'm gonna, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. This is the create a plan and work your plan uh, that we talked about. So zero to 10, how are you doing on getting noisy? Have you done all you can do? You've got your little, this is a, an example of a calendar using Excel. You can create this one tab for each month, lay out your plan and work your plan. Is that the one you wanted, Shawanda? 
just want to make sure we get to the end. Got it. Okay, good. Right. So all I did was uh, just create this in Excel. You can do the same thing. So, um, all right. So get noisy. What everybody go ahead. Uh, and zero again. We you've got a lot of work to do. Um, once you have that score, you can go and add everything up above. And uh, want to recommend that you do that right now. Thank you so much, Danilo. Um, I always love working with you guys. I'm so glad you guys are on the team. Um, okay, Moto, you're gonna next time you're gonna be much better. Uh, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and add all of the scores up above uh, and give us a score uh, for all of your uh, all of the things that we just went through. So it should be zero to seventy. There's ten for each and seven different sections. And if you are um, willing to do that, go ahead and share all of your scores totaled together. So, Anne, it should be more than five. Or was that five? Was okay. Okay, Tommy, 29. Okay, good. Out of 70. All right. Okay. 16 work in progress. Very good. Oh, good. Great foundation. Excellent. All right. Very good. Well, Adrienne, Loretta, thank you so much for. Um, for sharing that. Dan, uh, we've got to the end. I was going to say a few things about the class starting, but I'll turn it over to you if if you're ready or I can take questions. Up to you. Perfect. Yeah, we have a few minutes for questions now. Um, and then guys, we're going to, uh, after we finish the master class right at uh, 1.30, uh, we're going to go into a brief info session where we're going to talk about an awesome scholarship offer that we're uh, doing through the mayor's office we're actually offering the upcoming LinkedIn program that Cheryl leads at 50% off. Uh, so uh, Cheryl, if you wanted to just talk a little bit about the program, uh, what it covers, and then um, I, I can take over and just talk about the scholarships that we're offering and how to how people can make use of those if they're interested. And you know, those of you guys who are going through and scoring yourself and realize, gosh, there's a lot of opportunity for me to improve here. Uh, we pretty much guarantee that if you work with us and through our program, uh, you're going to be able to solve for a lot of those issues. So we'd love to have you stick around and we can share with you a little bit more about how we do that. All right. Well, I think we just, I, we just barely scratched the surface. There is so much there. Um, so this, in terms of this class, it's not about finding a job. So if you're a job seeker, not a good uh, match, but we do work with organizations, companies, uh, usually in that one to 150 employee range, a nice sweet spot for us. Uh, they can't really afford to hire an agency to do this full time for them. Um, we also like to work with people who are purpose driven. Obviously, if you talk about your core mission and your, um, you know, story of me, it it helps if you if you, if you have a, a bigger growth goal than just making lots of money and. Uh, being filthy rich, um, but doesn't that mean there's nothing bad with that? But um, we, we do like to work with purpose driven companies. Um, also, um, th really, we see a good fit with B2B um, and B2P. So professionals uh, reaching out to other professionals. That's really where the, um, the, the best fit is. Uh, and we're, we're, we like to work with people who are afraid, more afraid of the status quo than change, because we will, uh, yes, we do have actually a minister for Unity Church in Butte, Montana, taking the course. And um, so, yes, churches, definitely. Um, also, if you like simple, practical solutions, this is a great course. And if you want to learn from others instead of learning the hard way uh, or you want accountability, that's the other thing. This class will keep you accountable, right? We all have good intentions and we know the, the path to some place is paved with good intentions. We'll help you get um, those intentions into action. Uh, we have six classes. We meet Tuesdays from three to five. All of the classes are recorded. If you have to miss one, you can still see it. Uh, we have five interactive labs, Thursdays and Fridays, depends on which one you're assigned to. You get two one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with um, with somebody, either me or somebody equally as great, um, who is just going to be looking at your profile and helping you make sure your profile is everything it can be. So it's totally focused on you. The labs are smaller groups of people so you can learn from your peers, and that's uh, great. And we have a graduation ceremony 
um, a, a huge vi uh, video library you can access up to one year. And then we have members only communities. Uh, the one on LinkedIn we use it's called we call it a, a pod where people can go and once you join once you've taken the class you're a member of that pod and we've seen uh, pod uh, membership increase post views anywhere from uh, you know uh, 100 to 200 percent so um, a lot of people uh, charge for pods the average cost is around a hundred dollars a month um, and that's part of your uh, course. So that's another benefit that just keeps giving. You uh, get a personalized learning journey to see where you started and where you ended, um, as well as a certificate uh, that is uh, 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 accepted and, and uh, renowned uh, by others. And um, we also have a money back guarantee which is pretty phenomenal. In other words, we really believe in this stuff and we believe that if you, uh, that we'll give you the knowledge and uh, if, if you don't think it's worth uh, the investment, uh, we'll give you your money back, 100% guaranteed. So we have some thank you gifts. Uh, if you go to this URL, there's two downloads with some either profile tips, some things you can do. Uh, also, the link to the social selling index is here, uh, some, some great resources you can use, uh, and then also some posting tips, so content posting tips. Uh, you can uh, download those, and oh, this is the best. I'm sorry, this to me is the best thing. Lily, let's put this in the chat. Uh, LinkedIn Minutes, so I don't know, there's 25 or 30 of these. If you go through these, about two minutes each, so in 60 minutes, you could have your whole profile in ship shape, uh, ready to go, right? Can't click on the link. Uh, Lily is going to put it in the chat. But if you just go to LinkedIn, if you go to YouTube and search for uh, LinkedIn Minutes Biz Hack, it, there it is. There's the playlist. Subscribe, because I add one every week. And so uh, LinkedIn, uh, it's amazing, is constantly growing, improving adding new features so that's what i do i add new linkedin minutes every week so don't miss out make sure you subscribe when you get there all right uh okay i think oh i clicked on it no i didn't want to do that um here we go next steps uh you are welcome to either get with uh me or dan i'd be happy to meet with you i do a 15 minute uh free consultation for anybody for, on any topic um, but it, you're better off to talk to me about LinkedIn and maybe not some other things. Um, but, you know, it's your 15 minutes. You can talk about whatever you want. Um, and uh, I think Dan does the same thing. So um, I, I don't know. I can't I can't think of anything. Oh, but your parting thought. So we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. And so we would love for you to come uh, with BizHack and help build some profitable habits together. Aristotle, yes, yes, Kurt. All right, and this list, um, I think, Lilia, uh, did you share a document with these on it, I think? This yeah, are we're all gonna be links. sending a follow-up with you guys with a link to the presentation and some of these key links as our thank you for coming today. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for the time and for the interest. And, Thanks again to the mayor's office for being our incredible partner on this series. Um, uh, Danilo, uh, before I launch into kind of a little bit more about our upcoming offer, which is going to be half off uh, the course uh, that Cheryl leads, um, anything that you wanted to add just about your reflections on the importance of LinkedIn for business owners and, 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 and small businesses? Right. So, um, you know, I'm really passionate, like you guys are, about teaching small business owners how to generate the best kind of revenue there is, not from loans or necessarily uh, financial aid that we get, but from actually generating paying customers. And LinkedIn really has changed tremendously in the last five years, even, or even a couple of years. And so it's a different ball game on LinkedIn. And I think a lot of small business owners don't understand that yet. And so we've neglected LinkedIn a little bit. But if you are trying to attract a clientele, if you're trying to differentiate yourself and with Facebook doing some of the things where they're engendering less trust from the public, I think LinkedIn is representing a very uh, critical way to move forward with your small business. So I think it's powerful. Great content from Cheryl as always. So thank you guys. 
it's great to partner with BizHack and such great professionals. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, you know, we're really honored, guys, to offer right now our LinkedIn program, which is normally uh, $997 for a uh, half off. Um, and uh, the way for you to, to take advantage of that is to just go to bizhack.com slash promo and put half off all caps uh, into the into the promo code. Um, I wanted to just kind of I, I wanted to just say, Dan, yeah. I mean, that's very generous. Uh, you know, most other competitors who are not as good. Um, you know, they charge that amount, the half off is what they charge just for one on ones, just a one on one yeah. session. So uh, this is phenomenal. That's a great deal. Well, it, very it, generous. look, we know right now that small businesses are struggling. We also know that a lot of the folks who are uh, here today uh, are micro enterprises, um, you know, small organizations, mom and pops, family run businesses, solopreneurs. Um, and we're really committed to serving you. You know, we have done nearly a hundred now free webinars, sharing our knowledge, sharing our expertise, sharing our amazing instructors with you. And we also know that it really comes from personalized coaching, small groups, and a community is really where we can transform your, your life. Um, and we do it by building better habits. And so, the course is entirely designed to take the time that you're currently spending on your social media, on your LinkedIn, and making it effective, having it give the biggest bang for its buck, and developing, as Aristotle said, those, be those best habits. And so um, what we really want to do is offer you a structured, systematic way for you to upskill and upgrade your marketing. And um, we've done this now for hundreds of businesses and our aim is singular, which is we wanna have a transformative impact on your life, on your business. And we design the programs to do that. Um, it's not simply about getting your profile in shape, that foundational piece. That's obviously incredibly important. If you're gonna get noisy on your thought leadership focus, you want to make sure that the foundation is strong. And by having the foundation be strong, what we mean there is we want to make sure that you're being seen by the right people and that you're discoverable in LinkedIn search, which, which has become increasingly important as during COVID, more and more marketing and professionals have moved into LinkedIn. So over the last two years, due to COVID, more and more marketing and marketers and professionals have moved to LinkedIn. It's, first of all, the number one recruiting platform, but it's also become increasingly important for small businesses to market themselves, particularly business to business or B2B businesses. And so if you are in sales or if you are a B2B company or if you are a, a company that's looking to forge relationships with potential partners, it's essential that you're on LinkedIn. And what we see kind of so often is that your competitors are eating your lunch, is that you're hurting yourself in invisible ways. If you have a profile on LinkedIn and it's a stub, it's just a couple great icons in your name, um, that's actually hurting your brand because I promise you, every potential employee, every potential partner, every sales prospect is now looking at you, the owner on LinkedIn. And if they don't see a robust profile, what that tells them is that you're small. What that tells them is that you're little. What that tells them is that you're not attending to one of the key sales channels. And that only can mean bad things. It can only eliminate opportunities. And the worst part about it is that the impact of you not being effectively presented on LinkedIn is invisible. Because the impact is missed opportunities, people who don't reach out to you, uh, searches, searches that you're not showing up in the results for. And so what we've done is developed a program that really solves for that. Um, again, the, the program uh, is normally 997 and we're offering it at half off uh, to all of you. Um, the, go to bizhack.com slash promo and enter the code half off H A L F O F F in all caps. Um, we'll we'll put it again in the chat, 
and and you can get this this great offer. We, we would love to work with you and serve you in this way. And I'm happy to take any questions that anybody might have. Uh, feel free to uh, throw them into the chat. Uh, and thank you, Danilo, again for uh, creating this platform for us to serve our local community. Uh, we love small businesses and we want to help you um, thrive. And we know that the business environment is challenging right now uh, and we're here to help. I want to give a shout out to Janina who already scheduled an appointment with me. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Excellent. Way to be proactive. You know, we're, we're here to help guys. Um, so uh, just to wrap up, uh, again, uh, bizhack.com slash promo, and then put in half off, and you can get uh, the program for half off uh, for a little under $500. The, uh, that includes two one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, a weekly lab, and more than 15 hours uh, of incredible programming like this one hour that you just experienced. Basically, what we do in the course is we force you to get your profile in shape, and then we run you through how to take action on each of the levels in the thought leadership pyramid. So you've seen, in essence, the structure of the course. And it's really just a question if you'd like to actually have help walking through it. But you're going to get all those free resources. Um, you can try to do it on your own. Uh, we always encourage you to do best practices and, and to get noisy on your thought leadership focus. Um, and uh, in two weeks, we'll be back at this exact same time to talk about Google Business Profile and two weeks after that to talk about brand love essentials. Uh, I'm Dan Gretsch, the founder of BizHack and the host of the BizHack uh, Live Marketing Series in partnership with the Office of the Miami-Dade Mayor. Thank you guys so much. And I really hope to see you uh, in class next week uh, on LinkedIn. Have a really good one.